I like the shout out Jamal Ross was sending me this story that I'm bringing to you right here. And this is a very tragic story. I never, I don't remember hearing about the story actually happening because it happened two years ago. But even then, I don't remember hearing about this because it probably was handled more on a local level. In this image, you have the picture of two girls by the name of Kayla Cuevas and Nisa Mickens. Um, Kayla's on the left and Nisa is on the right. Um, two girls in high school together who were friends with each other, very close friends who unfortunately were brutally murdered by members of the MS-13 gang. Now, if you're not familiar with the MS-13 gang, they are basically a gang pretty much compiled up of mostly South slash Latin America American immigrants that pretty much got founded back in the 80s, and they pretty much been wreaking havoc ever since they got here. That's probably one reason why they're trying to close the borders, too, because they're afraid that a lot of them are coming over illegally and joining into this gang and just um, causing a lot of chaos. Um, this happened in New York, where one night these two girls were walking down the street um, together and, you know, I guess it was some kind of gang um, robbery things going on and both of these girls were brutally murdered. Now I'm going to go ahead and read this article because it goes to show you that we have no allies because now because remember that happened two years ago the trial is about to happen but the response as far as who like from the gang members of how they felt involving these two young girls pretty much lets you know that they had no remorse remorse for what they did in the three members of the notorious salvadorian gang ms-13 showed no remorse tuesday as they laughed and joked in a New York courtroom while the family of one of their alleged murder victims, a teenage girl, grimly looked on. Enrique Portillo and brothers Alexi Sainz and Gyro Sainz laughed, smiled, and joked with each other as prosecutors said they were waiting to hear from the U.S. Justice Department about whether they can pursue the death penalty. The family of 16-year-old Kayla Cuevas, the Brentwood, New York girl, they are accused of slaughtering in cold blood alongside her friend Nisa Mickens age 15, glared at them from the gallery. The two teenage girls were slaughtered in a residential neighborhood near an elementary school on September 13, 2016, the day before Mickens' 16th birthday. Her body was found on a tree-lined street in Brentwood, while Cuevas' beaten body turned up in the wooded backyard of a nearby home a day later. The two teens were lifelong friends who, who friends and family said they were inseparable and shared an interest in basketball. We shouldn't be tolerating this type of behavior at all whatsoever. These are kids getting um, kids um, getting killed. This should not be tolerated at all, Cuevas' mother Evelyn Rodriguez told Fox and Friends last July. U.S. Attorney Robert L. Caper said that the Science Brothers ordered the killing of Cuevas in retaliation after she called out the gang at school on a social media. Officials said Mickens was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Portillo and two other juveniles were also charged with killing the two teenagers. For far too long, MS-13 has been meting out their own version of the death penalty. The three suspects, who were among 13 gang members charged with a series of crimes, including seven murders, in March 2017. Now, it's funny how when it comes to this type of crime, it's, right, there you go, seven murders right there in... um. Of last um in March, just in the month of March last year, but you have lamestream media that constantly talk about Chicago and black on black crime. Yet you have those murders happening in New York, and probably a whole lot more that go that go pretty much unnoticed and they're treated as an isolated incident. U.S. Attorney General, the evil elf has emphasized the Trump administration's commitment to combating MS-13 and has allowed prosecutors to pursue any legal avenue to target the gang, although he has not yet stated whether capital punishment is on the table for Patillo and the Sienses. Meanwhile, reputed MS-13 members Mario Aguilar Lopez and Jose Suarez, who would also appear in court Tuesday, are accused of killing a rival gang member and injuring an onlooker. Judge Joseph Blanc Bianco offered to hit the case for 
Aguilar Lopez and Suarez separately, although their lawyers have yet to file the proper motions to do so. They do not face the death penalty. MS-13 was started by Central American immigrants, mainly from El Salvador and Los Angeles in the 1980s, but has since expanded to include several other Central and South American countries. The gang is believed to be responsible for 25 killings in New York City's Long Island suburbs in the past two years. Yet we're seen as a threat. Now, if I hadn't read this, especially that last part about the 25 killings in the last two years, you probably wouldn't have known because I didn't know about it. Lamestream media doesn't talk about stuff like that. The last time I think they really reported about MS-13 in the news that I can remember, I was probably in high school. So that was well, that was about well over 10 years ago. But when it comes to black people, they love to report on them daily. But well, nowadays it seems that the news is saturated with all these um, mass shootings or attempted mass shootings. So it's like they kind of scaled back on that. But don't think that they're not going to bring it back up. But as I was saying, I had to pause it right quick. Don't think that the lynching media won't try to veer their way back into it because when when all these shootings or these attempted mass shootings happening, you see on social media where, yeah, the colonizer still talking about what about Chicago? What about black on black crime to deflect from what's obviously going on in their communities? But off my condolences to the families of these two young girls. Hopefully something does happen, but the way that it's set up and the way that they operate, I almost doubt anything will happen. Well, shoot, it, it might. I don't know. But let's just say it's going to be more from where they came from. Because 25 killings in the last two years means that they are literally still popping up a lot. And New York, in case you don't know, has a huge melting pot of people that live there from all backgrounds but they also have a depending on where you are they have a huge uh latin america or um i guess you can say um mestizo community so like so for example like if you are familiar with new york you know that the bronx has a huge that's where a lot of the puerto ricans are at in the bronx and Washington Heights, that's where most of the Dominicans are. But it's a huge, huge community between the both of them. And since MS-13 is most, this is El Salvadorian or South America, Latin American countries, I guess you can say they're kind of interchangeable when it comes to something like that. But then again, it probably isn't. So who knows what influences they may have over the court system on that note i'm going to end the video right here y'all let me know what you think down in the comments